Okay, guys, let's go ahead and jump into chapter four. Uh, in this chapter, we're going to start talking about the arrangement of the electrons in the atom. Uh, but first, we're going to talk about the new atomic model. Now, in the previous chapter, uh, we talked about Dalton and Thompson and Rutherford. And the model that was created after all of their work was done uh, was an improvement over the previous models, but it still was incomplete. Um, it didn't tell us exactly where the electrons were located, and it didn't tell us what prevented the electrons from being drawn into the nucleus. Now, as we started to learn more about science, we jumped into the um, theory of light and looking at light and how light interacted. Now, the way we classify light is we say that it's, it, it's electromagnetic radiation. It's a form of energy that exhibits wave-like behavior as it travels through space. Now this light or this electromagnetic radiation uh, can either be visible light, meaning the colors that we see through our eyes, uh, or x-rays, ultraviolet or infrared light, uh, microwaves, and radio waves. Um, one thing that all of these have in common is that they move at a constant speed. They move at a speed of 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, which is extremely fast. Now, we kind of group all these together in what we call the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, it's all the electromagnetic radiation. So all of these forms of light um, are in the electromagnetic spectrum, the ES. Now, we see the electromagnetic spectrum here. We see that we have our radio, microwaves, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. And we see that the visible light is actually a very small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, we see a couple things. We see the wave going through the middle. And we see that here, that we have a very long wavelength. In radio waves, we have wavelengths that are very long. A wavelength is just something from a peak to a peak. Okay, and we see there's a lot of space right here. And then as we get into gamma rays, we see that, that distance has shrunk a lot. Okay, so we have a very short wavelength. Okay, and we can see that very low frequencies are going to be where we have very long wavelengths. And we have very high frequencies with very short wavelengths. So we see that frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional, meaning as one goes up, the other goes down. Now, to do wave calculations, to figure out what frequencies we have or what wavelengths we have, we use the equation uh, C equals wavelength. This is a sign for wavelength and frequency. Remember that wavelength is the distance between two peaks, and it's always measured in meters. We need to use it in meters because in this equation, C is the speed of light, and that's meters per second. So those two things have to line up. So in a problem, if it gives you something besides meters, you have to convert it to meters. And then frequency is the number of peaks that pass a point each second. And that unit that we use there is hertz, or you can call it inverse seconds. Now, as we studied more about uh, light, we had to ask ourselves, is light really a wave? Now, Max Planck did an experiment with light-matter interaction where light didn't act like a wave. Okay, And what happened, we saw a photoelectric effect, meaning the emissions of electrons from a metal when light shines on the metal. Okay, And he saw that it only emitted a certain energy. Okay, The wave theory says that any energy uh, should do it. Okay? And, but we only saw a specific certain energies. Okay? So this led to the particle theory of light, meaning light as a thing, not just as a wave, but as a particle, as something substance. Okay? And what Planck did was he suggested that objects emitted energies in specific amount, and he said that they were quanta. Okay? Okay, a quantum is a minimum quantity of energy that can be lost or gained by an atom. Okay, it led Planck to relate the energy of an electron with the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation and developed this equation where we have energy 
and we have Planck's constant, which is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules seconds. And then we have frequency, which we saw in the previous uh, equation with wavelength. Okay, so specifically, each frequency would emit a certain energy, a certain amount of energy. Now, it wasn't until Einstein, until he figured out that light has a dual nature meaning it light behaves as a wave and as a particle okay and he uh, defined that particle as a photon meaning it's a particle of the electromagnetic radiation having zero mass and carrying a quantum energy so it has a certain amount of energy and it acts as a, acts as a wave okay so it's a wave and it's a particle now, we use this with atoms to create a bright line spectrum, which you can see at the bottom. Here is a gas-filled tube, and it's filled with hydrogen. And as we pass electricity through that gas-filled tube, hydrogen emits a light, a very specific light. If we break hydrogen, its light that it's produced, up into its parts, its different frequencies, we can see that it has different colors. And these colors, these bright line spectrums, or emission spectrums, um, there are a series of specific light frequencies emitted by every single element. Okay? Each element has a very unique bright line spe spectrum. Okay? And how this is produced, okay? we have a ground state, which is the lowest energy state of an electron, and then we have an excited state. A higher energy than the ground state. Okay, now we see with Bohr that he created and explained how electrons stayed in the cloud instead of slamming into the nucleus. He defined those orbits um, and said that each electron has a specific orbit, has a specific path. Okay. And he said that the greater distance from the nucleus, the greater the energy of an electron in that shell. We can see this over here in this picture. We have the nucleus, and then we have those energy levels or those orbits going around it. Now, as those electrons receive energy, okay, the electrons start the ground state, which we previously said, and it's the lowest possible energy level, and it absorbs energy. That electron absorbs energy, and it becomes excited and shifts upward to a higher energy level. Okay, so that electron's at a higher energy level. And then, when it drops back down to the ground state, it emits a photon, which is a packet of energy equal to the pre previously absorbed amount. Because remember, energy has to follow the law of conservation of energy. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. So whatever it absorbs, it'll emit it in the same amount as a photon. So if we have the nucleus in the center and the electrons going around it, as that electron jumps to a higher energy level, it absorbs energy. And then as it comes back down, it releases that energy as a photon. And that's where we get our hydrogen, hydrogen emission spectrum. As they jump from level to level, it emits light, and we pick up that light and break it up into its parts. Now, Bohr model, it was very good. We had the nucleus in the middle and the electrons going around it, but it didn't answer the question of why. Why didn't the electrons have to, t to stay in a specific orbit? Why couldn't the electrons exist anywhere in the cloud? Now, Luis pointed out that electrons act like waves. Okay? It acts like, like light. Okay, using Planck's equation, Luis proved that electrons can have specific energies and that Bohr's quantized orbits were actually correct. So what he saw was he saw that each electron had a specific amount of energy, okay, an energy level, and we'll get into those later. Now, one thing that did make it hard was the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, meaning that it was impossible to determine both the exact location and the velocity of an electron that when we're looking at the hydrogen emission spectrum, we're not looking at the electrons, we're looking at where the electrons have been. 
so it made it pretty hard. Schrodinger gave more support to Bohr in those quantized energy levels, okay? And he created the quantum theory, which describes the wave properties of electrons using mathematical equations, okay? And defined electrons as waves.